I'm Miss Donna. Welcome to Let's Visit Ancient Egypt. Isn't ancient Egypt fascinating? If you think about the pyramids and mummies and the pharaohs and hieroglyphics, it's also interesting, isn't it? And we have a lot of books here at the library where you can learn more about ancient Egypt. I'm just going to show you a few of those, okay? So this one is from DK Publishing. It's called Ancient Egypt. And what I love about this book is that it has information about all kinds of things <clears throat> having to do with ancient Egypt and lots and lots of pictures, which is wonderful to see those pictures. Also from DK Publishing, we have a book that's just about pyramids and it's entitled Pyramid. And again, lots of great information and wonderful pictures. If you're interested in um, Egyptian mythology, we have some books about that. And here's one of them, The Treasury of Egyptian Mythology. I don't know if any of you have ever read any weird and true books, weird but true books, but we have one on ancient Egypt. Weird but true. Ancient Egypt, all kinds of different things that you can find out. And maybe you've heard of King Tut. So this is Tutankhamun, the boy king. It's a biography of him. He's probably the most famous pharaoh just because um, in the early 1900s, archaeologists found his tomb and it was pretty much intact. So they were able to recover lots and lots of things um, from his grave. So this is a book about him. So if you um, register for this um, program, you can come to the library inside or to the drive up window and pick up a packet of materials that looks like this <clears throat> through August 4th. And I'm going to tell you about what's inside this packet in just a few minutes. <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to read you a story, though. It's called We're Sailing Down the Nile, A Journey Through Egypt. It's by Lori Krebs and Ann Wilson, and it is published by, let me remind myself, Barefoot Books. <clears throat> Climb aboard the riverboat. We're sailing down the Nile. We'll visit Abu Simbel in just a little while. We see the temple just ahead. Jabari's in the lead. We stand before the statues, feeling very small indeed. Climb aboard the riverboat. We're sailing down the Nile. We'll shop at Aswan's Market in just a little while. Kaila guides us to the souk and we buy some food to share. We'll picnic on the island with the others gathered there. Climb aboard the riverboat. We're sailing down the Nile. We'll reach the Valley of the Kings in just a little while. Our pharaohs once were buried here, says Ibrahim with pride, and Tutankhamun's tomb was found with treasures packed inside. Climb aboard the riverboat. We're sailing down the Nile. We'll be at the oasis in just a little while. Zahara greets the farmers who are harvesting their crops. They'll take their food and vegetables to sell in village shops. Climb aboard the riverboat. We're sailing down the Nile. We'll see the Cairo skyline in just a little while. Inside the vast museum halls, we'll see fantastic things. Mustafa spies the mummies of the crocodiles and kings. Climb aboard the riverboat. We're sailing down the Nile. We'll hike to Giza's pyramids in just a little while. Jamila knows these wondrous tombs built centuries ago still rise above the city with a fabled sphinx below. There's the sphinx right there. Looks like part lion and part man, huh? Climb down from the riverboat. We've sailed along the Nile and traveled across Egypt for just a little while. The day is nearly over and the sun sets in the west. We'll dream about our journey and the places we loved best. And then here at the end, there's a map showing their journey. Okay, now as I said, um, 
you, you can pick up this bag of materials. Let me show you what's in it. On this sheet, it gives you some facts about ancient Egypt, um, and then it tells you how to make the different crafts. And also, um, at the back, there are some virtual field trips that you can take to see some things in Egypt that show that ancient world. Okay, so there's that. And then, so what are you going to do? In here, we have a paper plate that's been cut. So this is going to make um, an Egyptian collar. So the ancient Egyptians loved jewelry. Poor people, rich people, young people, old people, they all wore jewelry. And one of the things that they wore was a collar. And these would typically be made of beads that were strung together in like loops. But we're gonna make ours out of um, this paper plate. So there are a couple ways you can do that. I'm just gonna show you a couple that I made. They will give you some ideas. So I made this one <clears throat> using paint. So if you have some paint at home, you can paint it. And one of the nice things about using the paper plate is that there are some grooves that kind of help you to make stripes if you want to make stripes. And you can do it either way. You can either turn it this way, um, the opposite of how you would eat off of it, or the other way, just the way you would eat off of it, okay? And then this one I did using Sharpies. So you can use crayons, you can use markers, Sharpies, paint, whatever you want to, and make it look, um, just use your imagination in terms of um, painting it or coloring it in. Also in your bag, there is um, a little bag of gemstones and you can use some of those also for making, um, decorating your collar, okay? So there's that. Now the other piece of jewelry you're going to make is a wristband. And what you need to provide is a toilet paper tube. So once you have your toilet paper tube, you're going to cut it lengthwise. So let me show you. So you're gonna cut it like that. And you can make it shorter. If you want it to make it shorter in order to fit on your wrist better, certainly do that. Or you can leave it this way. And then you're going to cover it with a piece of aluminum foil, which is in your bag. So you're just gonna cover it and kind of fold it there around. Okay. So once you have it covered nicely, you are going to draw some designs on it. So you can make any designs you want. You could put flowers, trees, letters of the alphabet, anything that you want. You're going to press oh, kind of hard. So let me just make a flower here. You probably won't be able to see it, but I'm making a flower and I'm pressing rather hard. Okay. Now, what you're going to do at this point, after you've decorated it, there are a couple things you could do. One is you could simply use some Sharpies and decorate it and make it um, different colors. Or if you have some paint, what I did with mine is I wanted it to look old. So I took some black paint and I kind of rubbed it on and rub some of it off. So it, it, it helps those um, designs that you made to show up better. So that's what I did. So you can do it either way. You can either use paint and rub some off or you can just decorate it with some Sharpies. And then I also, for my bag of gems, I put some gemstones on it, okay? So then I can wear it. There's my, my bracelet. So I could wear my bracelet and my collar and I'll look very, very much like an ancient Egyptian, won't I? Okay, now the other thing you have here is, let me show it to you, looks like this. It's the Great Pyramid. So all you have to do is cut it out and then fold it along the lines and then glue the tab. So. And then before you um, glue the tab though, you can color it in. So let me show you um, three different ones that I did. This one, I just left it kind of grayish, okay? The actual um, pyramids, the, the ones that we can go to um, Egypt and see right now, they're kind of a tan color, kind of look like sand. Um, but when these were first built, they were covered 
with um, a limestone casing that they polished and it was very, very shiny. So you can imagine how that looked, those white pyramids rising up out of the sand. I bet it looked really amazing. So you could definitely leave it just like this, a little bit grayish white. Or if you wanted to look sand colored, you could color it in like I did this one with um, a marker or crayon. And here's the tab that I was talking about. You're just going to glue that and then you make your pyramid. Or you could just color it in any way you want. So I made one that has four different colors. So that looks pretty neat. That'd be pretty amazing if the pyramids look like that, huh? Okay, so there's your Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and it's the only one that you can still see today. So that's pretty neat. Okay, the next thing you're going to make is a cartouche. So you're going to have one that's empty like this one. This is a cartouche, so it was made of clay that was dried, and um, in it they would put the name of the pharaoh. And um, you're going to make your name, though, right? And it's with hieroglyphics. So you have a sheet right here with hieroglyphics for each letter. So you're just going to um, make them all on here going down. Or you can make it going across either way. So let me show you mine. So I made my name, which is Donna. And my name is kind of a medium um, length name. So I was able to make my pictures a little bit larger. If I had a long name, let's say my name was Stephanie, well then I'm gonna have to make my letters much smaller. And I would suggest that when you do this that maybe you would use a pencil and draw them on first with a pencil just in case you need to do any erasing. And then you can color them in with a marker or a crayon. And you can also decorate it around the um, edges if you'd like to do that. Now, now um, the pharaoh, when they would put his name in a cartouche, they would always put a line underneath. So I put a line underneath mine, even though I'm not a pharaoh. Okay, and then there's a game that you can play. So it's Mehen the Snake Game. You, you can leave this game board just as it is like this, or you could cut it out, that's up to you. You can also color it in if you'd like to and uh, make it look a little bit better than just plain white. And then there are instructions here on how to play the game. Now, nowadays we play a lot of games using dice, but they didn't use dice for this game, they used some sticks. So you have some four craft sticks in your bag, and you're gonna color one side of those, um, just any color. And then you throw those, and that's how you decide how many um, places that you can move. And all, they're all the instructions are here on how to play the game. And here are the game pieces down here, which you just need to cut out. Okay, and if you want to color those in, you could do that too. So there's the snake game. And then there's also a little maze. So you can start here and try to get to the middle of my pyramid. So I hope that you're going to enjoy making all of those. So let's end with another story. This one is called The Little Hippo. It's by Anya Kloss and Geraldine Elshner. It's a children's book inspired by Egyptian art. And it's published by Prestel. This story begins in ancient Egypt during the happy age of blue hippos. At that time, if you gazed at the watery marshes that lined the cities, you could see the hippos' backs curled up along the horizon. As the good masters of the River Nile, the blue hippos basked in tranquil waters. All around them bloomed flowers, and as time went by, the river's many plants left a mark on their sun-bathed skin. Fish would brush against them, Butterflies would land on them, and birds pecked without fear at these strange turquoise creatures. One day, the youngest among them, the one they called Little Hippo, became the friend of Antef, a tall old man with white hair. Every night, side by side, Antef and Little Hippo would admire the setting sun. The sun dies each day to be reborn each morning, the old man would say. Soon I will fall asleep just like him, and then a long journey will begin. 
went on to have love for this unknown kingdom, and when he was laid below the ground, little Hippo lay down beside him and fell into a deep slumber. Time went by. Days, months, centuries. Do you know how long a century is? It's a it's hundred years, right? So many centuries went by. Hidden deep inside their tomb, Antef and Little Hippo seemed to be forgotten. Then one bright morning, at the first light of dawn, shovels began to dig through the earth. Hands began to search slowly through everything. And one by one, the diggers removed a multitude of objects, each one more precious than the other. All of this commotion woke up Little Hippo, who became frightened and he hid beneath a stone. It was only then that he noticed his size. Instead of growing all these years, he had been getting smaller and smaller. Well, as soon as he got a chance, Little Hippo slipped out into the open. Nothing looked the same outside. The city had vanished into thin air, and in the river, the blue hippos had disappeared. Where were his brothers, his friends, his parents? There was not even a single flower growing anywhere, not a single bird flying in the sky. Wind and time had taken them all. I need to find my own kind, thought little hippo. Perhaps they've left for distant lands, the one which Antef so often mentioned. And so he began his journey, a minuscule blue spot in the big golden desert. He scampered for days. The more he walked, the more sand stuck to his skin, covering the beautiful turquoise color of his back. Soon, he began to shine as brightly as the sun. Little by little, underneath his feet, clay began to replace the warm sand of the desert. Houses lined the road here and there, and when the wind blew clay dust onto his body, little Hippo took the appearance of the setting sun. In the distance, a forest appeared. Little Hippo was so happy to see the trees and plants again. He rolled around in the leaves and ate them with delight. And when he came out, he was as green as a prairie. Little Hippo kept walking and walking for what seemed like an eternity. At last, he saw tall silhouettes on the horizon. A thick fog floated in the air, heavy with dust and smoke. Exhausted, little Hippo lay down and fell asleep. When he woke up, he looked just like a little gray mouse. Little Hippo sighed. He'd been traveling for so long, he would never find his long lost ancestors. When he caught sight of water flowing gently in a meandering river, he slipped into it and began to cry. But all of a sudden, as the current washed over his small round back, he saw them, his parents, his brothers, his friends. They were all waiting for him in a pyramid made of glass. Filled with joy, little Hippo ran up to join them with all the strength that his little legs would allow. I wonder if you know what this is. It's part of a museum in, in Paris, France, and that um, museum is called the Louvre and they have a glass pyramid at the entrance of it. Well, ever since that day, little Hippo has slept blissfully beside his family and friends. Meanwhile, around the earth, all hippos bathe tirelessly in the hope that one day they'll recover the beautiful turquoise color they once had. And there's little blue hippo with his family. And let's see what the real um, little blue hippo looks like. So there's one that's in the museum in Paris. So that's where the story comes from. They saw this turquoise hippo and they made a story about it. All right, so thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you're going to enjoy um, learning more about ancient Egypt by coming to the library and getting some books. And I hope that you're going to enjoy making um, the wonderful crafts that we've talked about today. So have a great summer and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.